The interesting thing I found about Hyokitaki was it was uh, some spectral analysis showed that there were uh, high concentrations of acetylene gas in the in the nucleus, along with methane and ethane, which are of course highly flammable gases. And Comet Swan discovered March 25th, 2020 by the solar wind and isotopus camera, discharging an estimated 2,866 pounds of water every second, or cloud in origin. So we probably won't be seeing Comet Swan again. Comet West, early 1976, and there's Hayukataki again, very long streamer of a tail. So after the last passage of Comet Halley in 19, what was it, 86, we kind of came up with a new model of a cometary nucleus, which essentially it's almost like an egg that, if you look at a cutaway, it could be an icy matrix with any number of various materials entrained within it. And, you know, once a comet begins to come into the inner solar system, into the zone of the planets, it begins to heat up, it begins to devolatilize. It'll come in typically, often depending on perihelion passage, which is its closest passage to the sun, it'll oftentimes begin to uh, undergo a process of disintegration. And when it does that, it gives birth to meteor streams. And then the Earth crosses meteor streams regularly. There's probably a dozen of them or so every year that the Earth crosses. Some are more spectacular than others. I always have liked the Draconids and the Geminids and the Leonids. I like the Leonids because they come out in the fall when you can see them very nicely. We cross the Torrid Stream twice each year, once in late October, early November. There have sometimes been called the Halloween meteors. This is perhaps the origin of the Tunguska object.